Hello everyone, welcome back to Chemical Engineering and Aspen channel. As you know, these days we are covering the module of Chemical Reaction Engineering. So in this regard, we are bringing the lecture number 48 for our valuable viewers. So in today's course coverage, we will move to our chapter number 11, which is non-isothermal reactor design. Previously, we have studied mole balance, rate law, stoichiometry, isothermal design in our previous 47 lectures, and we have covered the various topics on the isothermal designs or we have learned various concepts of isothermal design but now it is important for us to move to non-isothermal design because if we talk about the industrial reactors or even if we talk about the final year design project these are mainly focused on the non-isothermal design so in this regard we will solve an example which is 11.1 to understand that how we can develop an algorithm for the non-isothermal design by definition if we see Isothermal means that the temperature of the feed, temperature within the reactor and temperature of the product all will remain the same. But once we talk about the non-isothermal design, it means that the temperature of the feed will be different to that of the temperature within the reactor. And obviously because of this temperature variations, we will call it as the non-isothermal design. Objectives of this chapter include describe the algorithm for batch reactors, CSTRs, PFRs and PBRs that are not operated isothermally. Second objective of this chapter is that we have to size adiabatic reactors, which are batch reactors, CSTR, PFR, and PBR. And third objective is to use reactor staging to obtain high conversions for highly exothermic reversible reactions. So we will achieve all these objectives one by one in our upcoming lectures. So let's go to the example 11.1, which states, that the first order liquid phase reaction in which one reactant which is designated as A goes to B is carried out in a plug flow reactor. The reaction is exothermic and the reactor is operated adiabatically. Adiabatically means no heat transfer to the surroundings but it does not mean that it is an isothermal system. As a result, the temperature will increase with conversion down the length of the reactor. So as we move Along the length of the reactor, the conversion increases, which is the same phenomena as that of the isothermal, but now here the temperature will also vary along the length of the reactor. For example, if it's a 10 meter length in the reactor, then we will say that at 1 meter the temperature and conversion will be different, at 2 meter the temperature will be different, and up to so on at each point, both the conversion and temperature will be different. Because T varies along the length of the reactor, so it means that with the variation of temperature, the rate constant, the reaction rate constant should also vary. Initially, we had assumed that it is an isothermal system. There is no change in temperature. So we had taken one value, the constant value of the temperature. However, once we talk about the non-isothermal reactor, we will say that the K will also vary at each point, which was obviously not the case for isothermal plug flow reactor. Describe how to calculate the PFR reactor volume which is necessary for 70% conversion and plot the corresponding profiles for X and T. So our first task is to see how to describe the algorithm or how to write the algorithm. And in the next lecture, we will solve an example related to it. So if we look at the mole balance for the PFR, it will remain the same as for the isothermal system that dx over dv is equal to minus Ra over Fe0. There, this has nothing to do with the isothermal nature or non-isothermal nature. Even similarly, if we talk about the rate law, again, it is either elementary or non-elementary. It has nothing to do with the isothermal or non-isothermal. So we will write it as minus Ra is equal to Kca because it's a irreversible first order reaction. Again, we say that K varies along with the temperature. So K is equal to K1 exponential E over R 1 over t, 1 minus 1 over t. This equation is the same which we had derived in our chapter number 3. For stoichiometry, chapter 4 will be followed and again it will again remain the same. C is equal to C naught 1 minus x. Now substituting the values of k and C A in the equation of this equation, if you see, k is replaced by k1 exponential e over r 1 over t, 1 minus 1 over t, C A naught 1 minus x. And coming to this equation, which is dx over dv is equal to minus Ra of, over Fe0. So minus Ra is replaced by this vector. Fe0 is substituted as V0 over C0. So minus Ra is K1 exponential E over R1 over T1 minus 1 over T. C0 1 minus X. 
well f a naught is replaced as v naught into c a naught this c a naught c a naught cancels out and we get t x over d v is equal to k1 exponential e over r 1 over t1 minus 1 over t into 1 minus x over v naught now to get the value of temperature we need an other equation which we call it as an energy balance equation previously if you remember we had five steps mole balance rate law stoichiometry combine and evaluate so if it was a isothermal system we could have gone to the evaluation part but now since it's a non isothermal system so we need another equation which is energy balance equation and here we state it as t is equal to t naught t naught is a reference temperature plus minus delta h rx which is the standard heat of reaction divided by cp of that species a into x so once we substitute the value of t in the previous equation because this t will vary with the variation in x the reference temperature will constant remain the constant this value will remain the constant cp will remain the constant while the x will change and with this variation in x the t will change with this variation in t this k will change and accordingly we will get different values of k different values again at the different temperatures the purpose of this example was to demonstrate that for non isothermal chemical reactions we need another step in the algorithm which is the energy balance and this balance allows us to solve for the reaction temperature which is necessary in evaluating the specific reaction rate constant k of t so you see there are six steps once we talk about the non isothermal system and an additional step actually we say mole balance rate law stoichiometry combine or we can say energy balance then combine then evaluate so there are six steps involved in the non isothermal design this is the overall depiction of how a non isothermal design algorithm looks like and in our next video we will solve first example where we will apply these concepts and we will calculate the corresponding volumes and corresponding information for each reactor so i hope you have understood all the aspects of this lecture if you have any queries feedback suggestion please provide it in the comment box and i would be happy to answer it so that's it from today's lecture thank you so much please do watch like share the video and subscribe to the channel also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel till then it's goodbye stay tuned for more exciting videos on this channel